Haunted house attractions are for fun, but sometimes they can be a place of sheer terror for the faint-hearted ones. This time, we're bringing you two of the most disturbing accounts of real people who never went to a haunted house again after what happened with them. So let's hear them out. Mark. Two years back, there was this fascinating haunted house attraction that would only open in October for Halloween. It was just the year they had to shut it down forever. And honestly, this was just the year I went. I visited the haunted house with my friends, Matt, Eddie, and Michael. We had planned our visit for Thursday since at that time, all of us were in college and had Fridays off. Unsurprisingly, there wasn't much traffic as it would have been over the weekend. But what set us off was seeing people stand in short lines beside the ticket booth. They were letting in one person at a time. We had no idea that each of us could only enter alone. I was unnerved by the idea of going first, so I shoved Michael in front and decided to go second. After a few minutes, I was allowed to enter. I saw this weirdly dressed woman opening the door for me. I can remember she was wearing this bloody costume. Inside, it was all dark. I could see corpses of mutilated bodies, which were really props, but happened to scare the hell out of me. I gained composure and continued to walk slowly through the maze. Each of these characters would show up to give me a good jump scare and vanish in a flash. Torches or phones were not allowed inside, so I continued to walk on the aisle. Then, all of a sudden, I saw a tall man approaching me. He was covered in all black, so I couldn't see his face. Now I had already gotten a taste for the characters, so I laughed at this man. But what was creepy is that he started pushing me. I was now a bit unnerved, but thought that maybe it was part of the act. I was curious to discover what's next, so I didn't say anything. But now this man pushed me with immaculate force. I guess it was hard enough to knock anyone off their feet. I said, get the fuck off me, dude. He he didn't say a word and kept pushing. I realized perhaps he's directing me to the next scary session. All of a sudden, I was now in a place that was masked in darkness. It was all pitch black, so I couldn't see anything. To my horror, I felt hands grabbing me from the back. It felt like something wasn't right. Whoever it was, I pushed them back and luckily managed to escape the darkness. Now, I found myself in a room which seemed to be a secluded place for storage. I knew something just went terribly wrong. My presence in the dark room was certainly not part of the act. I addressed the tall figure and asked him why he brought me here. I was furious now. I asked his name and wanted him to summon the manager for me, but he had no response. He could only give me a cold stare. I was now freaked out by this weirdo, so I saw the exit room and left immediately. Now I found myself in the middle of the haunted maze again. When the next character came for the act, I told him I've been assaulted by someone who didn't seem to work for the haunted house. This guy immediately broke character and guided me to the exit. I informed the girl at the exit booth about that creepy tall guy. She assured me that the team would look into it as the manager wasn't available that day. I exited the attraction only to realize that both Matt and Michael had completed their trip and were anxious to see me come out. I told them the entire story and they had lost it completely. The next day, a girl from our college made a Facebook post accusing the attraction after being physically assaulted during her visit. I knew right away that something was fishy. I approached the girl on Facebook and tried my best to inquire further. She had the same story as me, but unfortunately, she was brutally assaulted by that creepy guy. She had even gone on to sue the attraction manager for his negligence. That's what became the real reason for the attraction's shutdown. Since then, I haven't been to any haunted house attractions. What sets me off every time is the fact that the management had no clue that a creepy ghoulish stranger was living inside and sexually assaulting the visitors, and he wasn't even an employee of the attraction. They had no safety or security measures in place. So, I guess they shut down for the better. If you haven't subscribed till yet, make sure to subscribe for more True Haunted House stories. Also, hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on the latest updates. Our next True Haunted House story comes from Charlie. Here's his story. I had never been to a haunted house attraction until this day. I live in Fort Worth, Texas, and haunted house attractions are everywhere. My friends and I had made big plans to visit one. The idea of going together made me really excited, so I decided to have my first visit, which unfortunately ended up being my last ever. What adds some context to my story is the fact that I have PTSD. I developed it as a result of a very disturbing childhood. I'll get to that later in the story. Since my friends were absolutely thrilled about our visit, 
They didn't want to enter sober, so Noah, my best friend, planned a game for all of us. It was six of us. There were four boys and two girlfriends of my friends. Noah hosted a party in his backyard where we all smoked and drank. Now, I'm not much of a guy who would smoke regularly because every time I smoked weed, I felt paranoid. But it wasn't the same this time. Hanging out with friends made the duo of alcohol and weed feel good. We bought tickets online while we were in the backyard. Noah called an Uber, which was supposed to drop off to the attraction. The atmosphere was pretty electric. There were a lot of people waiting in the queue. I had now started to feel a bit woozy, but I didn't want to spoil the experience for my friends. So I tried to gain composure. I knew I was fading out, but at the same time, the atmosphere was starting to get a bit intense. So I guess that kept me awake all that time. When we entered the haunted house, the actors were absolutely perfect yet a bit too intense. The eerie atmosphere was also intense as it was crowded that day. I was now starting to feel a little anxious and unnerved by all the characters trying to freak me out. While my friends had a good laugh at each one of them, I thought I would shit my pants if all this goes on for any longer. As we went further, we got to a deserted room around the corner where we saw a man with bloodstains around his face. He was dressed in a long, rugged black coat and jet black mafia hat. It was all part of the act, so I managed to carry myself there, but it was just the taste of what was about to come next for me. In the same room, behind the shoulder of this tall mafia guy, I saw a weird man dressed casually. He wasn't playing any character here. He stared coldly right into my soul. I was freaked out completely as I saw my father. I started to panic and screamed for my life. I had lost it completely. My reaction made my friends chuckle. To calm me down, they assured me there was no one there. I wasn't well now, so I thought I would leave. I made my way to the exit door without interrupting my friends as I didn't want to spoil their experience. My friend Noah sat along with me outside. I was now feeling woozy again. Noah told me I shouldn't have smoked that much weed. It was all a really bad idea. Noah even told me that my father wasn't there. The reason I screamed on the top of my lungs after seeing him is because I had an abusive father. I was the eldest, so I remember him assaulting me and my sister. He left my mom when I was only 10. I caught PTSD right after that. My friends knew about my past. That's why Noah came out with me to make sure I was okay. The rest of the pack continued their trip to the haunted attractions while I sat at Wendy's to get something to eat so I could calm myself down. I reassured Noah I was fine before finally leaving. I went home and told my mom I needed to rest. I had already done enough weed that knocked me out as soon as I sat in my bed. That night, I really had the worst of my dreams. I again saw my father standing at the corner of the room. This time, it was a nine feet tall figure with his face calling out my name, Charlie. I was so scared by the sight of it that I screamed so loud that my mom came rushing to my room to see what had happened. I narrated the whole story to her and she felt really sorry for me. Since then, I haven't smoked anything, never been to a haunted house attraction from that day on, and except for slight alcohol, I don't do any games of smoking anymore. I'm sober again because I don't want nightmares. If you like the stories in this video, make sure to check our channel for more true haunted house stories. We have an entire collection of spine-chilling tales that unfold the most true disturbing experiences of real people.